With the recent release of Samsung's Galaxy S25 Edge and Apple's rumored iPhone 17 Air this fall, it's become clear that phones are getting thinner, which has caused many to ask, why? I mean, we went through this before and decided thicker was better. In 2009, iPhone 3GS reached a record thickness of 12.3 millimeters. This was at a time when iPods were Apple's most popular product, and they were far thinner than iPhone. So customers expected Apple to make the device slimmer, and they did. iPhone 4 was about 24% thinner than the 3GS, iPhone 5 was about 18% thinner than the 4S, and iPhone 6 was about 9% thinner than the 5S. This resulted in iPhone shrinking from 12.3 millimeters in 2009 to just 6.9 millimeters in 2014, a 43% reduction. But Apple broke from this trend starting with iPhone 6S, when they actually made it 3% thicker than the previous iPhone 6. Now, I don't think anyone actually noticed this change, but it proved Apple was willing to sacrifice thinness for new features, in this case, 3D Touch, which required a new force-sensitive layer that made the display panel slightly thicker. And this upward trend continued with almost every subsequent iPhone generation, until we got the 16 Pro Max today, which is over 16% thicker than the 6S, a pretty big increase. So why did Apple stop prioritizing thinness? Well, it's because we told them to. In October 2014, Scott Stein of CNET reviewed the 6.9 millimeter iPhone 6 and said, quote, I had battery life as my top most wanted feature for this year's iPhone, and I wasn't given what I wanted. I would have liked and bought a thicker iPhone with better battery life. And other people said the same thing. Mac Daily News in 2015 said, what would be wrong with a slightly thicker iPhone with more battery life? Even a YouTube channel called The Unlocker said, Apple should make their phones a bit bigger, make it 11 millimeters and give me 20 or 30 hours of battery. Now iPhone hasn't reached 11 millimeters of thickness, but at 8.25 millimeters, they've been able to deliver much longer battery life. At 33 hours of video playback, the 16 Pro Max lasts almost two and a half times longer than the 6S Plus did in 2015 partly due to its battery being 70% larger. And us customers have been really happy with that. So why then would Apple reverse course and make a 5.5 millimeter iPhone Air that compromises on battery life? Well, I've honestly been thinking about this, and I think they're trying to do two things. One, reinvigorate a stale smartphone market, and two, replicate the success of MacBook Air, because there are similarities. The original MacBook Air was 29% thinner, 40% lighter, and 44% smaller by volume than the standard MacBook. iPhone 17 Air is expected to be 33% thinner, 36% lighter, and 33% smaller by volume than the 16 Pro Max. Also, the MacBook Air featured the same 13.3-inch display as the larger MacBook, while the 17 Air is supposed to feature a 6.7-inch display almost as big as the 6.9 inch screen on 16 Pro Max. Both products' compromises are also similar, like shorter battery life and missing features. But I think Apple's made a big miscalculation, and it has to do with how people actually use notebooks versus smartphones. The difference in weight between the standard MacBook and the MacBook Air was two pounds. That was the equivalent of a school textbook. So carrying around a MacBook Air was much easier on your back. Plus, its thinness made space in your book bag for other things, like folders and notebooks. But these material benefits just don't transfer to smartphones. We all carry them in a pocket, bag, or purse. And a weight savings of 82 grams by switching from iPhone 16 Max to the 17 Air is the equivalent of a stack of post-it notes. It just doesn't offer much of an upside for users. But it does have a painful downside, less battery life. MacBooks are typically used in places within reach of an outlet, like a classroom, a bedroom, office, or cafe. So battery life isn't as critical compared to iPhone, which we tend to take off the charger in the morning and not plug in till the end of the day. Plus, we use our phones for way more than our MacBooks. A dead phone means no directions home or not being able to check in with loved ones. I think most people don't want to put that functionality at risk just for a slightly thinner and lighter design. 
And that brings me to the most important point that I really haven't heard people talk about. Apple's rumored to be bringing back the smart battery case to make up for the iPhone 17 Air's small battery. And if that's true, it would make the 17 Air the dumbest phone purchase anyone could make. Let me explain. 17 Air is expected to be 5.5 millimeters thick and weigh about 145 grams, making it 2.75 millimeters thinner and 82 grams lighter than today's 16 Pro Max. But a lot of people are going to use the battery case to make sure the 17 Air lasts a full day. If it's similar to the battery case for iPhone 11 Pro, it would add about 9 millimeters of thickness, whereas a standard case adds about 1.5 to 2.5 millimeters of thickness. So a super thin iPhone Air would suddenly become 14.5 millimeters thick with the battery case compared to 10.25 millimeters for the 16 Pro Max with a standard case. That's 41% thicker. Now let's consider its weight. The battery case would likely add around 190 grams. A standard case weighs about 28 grams. So iPhone 17 Air would weigh a total of 335 grams, which would be about 31% heavier than the 16 Pro Max. Not to mention the added inconvenience of carrying around the battery case when you don't need a charge, then putting it on when you do. And when it's not on, you might want to put the 17 Air inside a standard case just for protection, which means you'd either always have an extra case to carry around or always keep your thin and light phone in a thick and heavy case which would defeat the entire purpose of the device in the first place. But we haven't even gotten to the best part. You think all that extra size and weight would provide incredible battery life that exceeds the 16 Pro Max, right? I mean, you're carrying around something that's 41% thicker and 31% heavier. But no, the battery case is expected to be 1400 milliamp hours. Combined with the 17 Air's rumored 2800 milliamp hour battery, that's a total of 4,200, which is almost 9% smaller than the 4,600 milliamp hour battery inside 16 Pro Max. So you'd effectively end up with a bigger, thicker, heavier phone that actually has less battery life. But we're not done yet. Super thin phones don't just compromise battery life, but also premium features, which has proven to be important for smartphone customers. The S25 Edge has a lower resolution 12 megapixel ultra wide lens compared to 50 megapixels on the S25 Ultra, while the main lens has a smaller sensor, which means worse low light performance. And it doesn't have a telephoto lens at all, which means no five times optical zoom. There's also no S Pen support, and wired charging is slower at 25 watts compared to 45 watts. Then there's the price. At $1,100, it costs more than the $1,000 S25 Plus, which has better battery life and a better camera system. The S25 Ultra is just $200 more than the Edge, and has all the premium features customers have come to expect from modern smartphones iPhone 17 Air is also expected to be missing features. It'll only have one camera lens, like on the 16E, which people were already upset about on that device. And it'll only have one small speaker in the earpiece with no bottom speaker, and a lower performance A19 chip instead of the A19 Pro. But we're still not done. Now let's consider the cost. Apple's previous smart battery case was $129, so I'll be generous and assume they don't raise the price. The 17 Air is expected to cost $900, so buying the phone and case together would come to $1,030. The 16 Pro Max is $1,100, just $70 more, and it has more battery life, more features, more screen, and with their cases on, a thinner, lighter, and smaller design. So this all boils down to one question. How many customers want to pay the same amount, or in the case of the S25 Edge, pay more for less? Less size and less weight without the case, but also less battery, less camera, and less features. Personally, I don't think most people will iPhone sales in the past few years are higher than they've ever been. And that's precisely because Apple has given us exactly what we want. Big screens, big batteries, and big cameras. Just look at what happened when Apple stopped doing that in the past. 
The iPhone 12 mini delivered a lighter and more compact design, similar to the 17 Air, but it compromised on the very features we begged Apple for back in 2014. As a result, it was a sales disappointment. Demand for the 12 mini was so low that Apple cut its production by 70% just six months after its release and ended production sooner than any iPhone in history. And that's probably why Apple's playing it safe with the 17 Air, since it'll account for just 10% of all iPhone production, according to current rumors. The good news is that this trend toward thinness won't be like in the early days of iPhone. Back then, there was only one model, so if Apple decided to give it a small battery, we just had to deal with it. Today, though, we have options. There will be a 17 Plus and a 17 Pro Max with larger batteries, so we won't have to be tethered to a charging cable throughout the day if we don't want to.